the UniWire Instrument and UniWire FX plugins have similar edit windows. In this video, I'll discuss the Instrument plugin. To learn about the differences in the FX plugin, or to learn about any plugin feature in more detail, please see your written UniWire documentation. The first feature I'll discuss is the Connected To menu. By default, UniWire communicates with the first receptor in this list, so unless you're using multiple receptors, you'll rarely need to use this menu. Next up is the Latency menu. Latency is the amount of time it takes to send a MIDI note or audio recording over UniWire to receptor, process it in receptor, and then send it back over UniWire to your host computer. The minimum possible latency will be two times your host computer's buffer size. For example, if your sequencer has a buffer size of 128 samples, the minimum UniWire latency available is 256 samples. Sequencers with built-in latency compensation will, of course, automatically compensate. The buffer size mismatch and sample size mismatch LEDs will rarely light since, in general, Receptor will always automatically set its values to match those used by your computer. However, if you have an audio card with a particularly strange value dialed in, Receptor will notify you if it can't auto-match its values. The Audio Dropouts LED will light whenever Receptor cannot process all the data fast enough and therefore drops an audio buffer. Now there are various reasons for this and numerous ways to correct them, all of which are outlined in your UniWire documentation. If the Audio Dropouts light turns on, simply click it to turn it off. Using the Patch Select menus, you can select Receptor Single or Multi-Patches directly from the plugin. And if you add, delete, rename, or modify any patches within Receptor, simply click the Update button to refresh the plugin's patch list. It's important to remember that the UniWire plugin does not, itself, remember any edits you make to a Receptor patch, so if you make changes to a patch in Receptor, make sure to save those changes as a single or a multi-patch so that Receptor loads all the right sounds whenever you open your song in the host sequencer. And, speaking of editing Receptor patches, clicking the Launch Receptor Remote button will allow you to open a remote graphical edit window for Receptor. The right-hand side of the plugin shows a small graphical representation of Receptor, and this area is used to route UniWire data to a specific location in Receptor. Use the top menu to tell UniWire where to send the MIDI data. If you select All Receptor Channels, UniWire communicates with Receptor exactly the same as if you had connected MIDI cables between your host computer and Receptor. That is, your host computer sends 16 MIDI channels to Receptor, and Receptor responds to those MIDI channels using the various MIDI filter settings provided on each instrument channel. You can, however, choose to route MIDI data to a specific Receptor channel. Once you do this, you'll see another option that lets you target exactly what that data controls. You can send all 16 MIDI channels to the source VSTI, or to each of the effects VSTs, or to Receptor's mix section. Notice that whenever you set a different routing, the miniature receptor graphic changes to show you exactly where your MIDI data goes. It also shows you exactly which audio feed is going to be sent back to your host sequencer. For example, in this routing, we see that the UniWire plugin sends all 16 MIDI channels to instrument channel 1. This is ideal for controlling a multi timbral plugin. We also see that the audio you'll hear is the audio coming directly out of instrument channel 1. We don't hear the master channel audio output in this configuration, nor would we hear any send effects. The miniature graphic actually works in reverse, too. That is, you can click in the graphic to change the value in the menu. For example, if I click the multi-patch area, UniWire will send MIDI to all receptor channels. If I click channel 5, then UniWire will send MIDI to receptor channel 5. I can then click the area to the left of the receptor graphic and change the MIDI destination directly. The MIDI only checkbox here at the bottom is handy if, for example, you want to use MIDI over UniWire to automate parameters in a plugin or to automate Receptor's mixer. In this case, you don't want audio coming back into the host application, so you can check the MIDI only box. As you can see, this is a very powerful plugin, so take some time to read your UniWire documentation and learn how to put all of this power to use in your music productions.